Good morning and welcome. God bless you. This is a day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants to speak to us as he always does. In these Sundays after Pentecost, we have the opportunity to listen over and over again to teachings of Jesus. Jesus' teachings are always about helping others and calling us as his disciples to do the same. And so today's readings of, a reading of the gospel is very much like that. Now, we do have a problem this morning for this being taken care of. Juan is sick. Oh, pray for his well-being, because we have a big musical service here at 4 o'clock. The Senate Assembly, uh, pre-worship. And so, um, he needs to get better, fast. <laughs> he said he'd do it. But we are so blessed to have musicians in our uh, place, and uh, Stanley Wicks. Oh, Stanley, thank you so much. He's going to be uh, taking care of uh, hymns today. And so that's wonderful. And uh, also, we have uh, music today, special music. And, uh, oh, I see the two of you there. You're going to be at the uh, uh, anthem, right? Okay. Very good. I appreciate that very much. And uh, also, you would need your worship folder in your pew. It's a nice worship folder. And then you need your worship folder addendum uh, to get through this today. And we'll be using that addendum uh, throughout this season. And uh, as we come together this morning, of course, we'll be speaking our liturgy. And that's okay. And uh, we'll be doing that. And I... Rachel will sing it, and Elaine is going to do a comment, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. And, of course, at 4 o'clock is the time for our pre-assembly worship, and there's a reception that will follow under the uh, pavilion. So, you're welcome to be here, of course, and there'll be other people from around the synod, and it should be a good, good day for us. So, I think there is no prelude, so what we're going to begin with is our opening hymn which is, of course, you see it there. The hymn number is 543, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth. Lord our God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will bear witness against you. For I am God, your God. I may not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are always to I will not accept a calf from your stalls, nor goats from your pens. For all my angels are the cattle of God's I know every bird of the mountains and the creatures of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine, and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the most high. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you. You shall honor me.
second reading is from the fourth chapter of Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distress made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and, seeing her, said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the food players in the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I am going to do something this morning that I love to do. Preach about Jesus. Okay, that's what you expect. That's what we do when we come here. We are listening to Jesus and his experiences with people this morning. Now, I'm not going to talk about that Old Testament lesson because it's, it's pretty clear, isn't it? God wants us to do righteousness. And we have our father Abraham who trusted God and he was seen as a good and righteous person. And that was uh, accounted to him as faith. And so that's very important for us to hear. And of course, as we listen to all of these together, they move us to ask the question, how is it that Jesus relates to people around him? How does he relate to them? So let's look at that instance where Jesus is relating to this tax collector. You know the background to that, don't you? And I know the background to it. That tax collectors, not only Matthew, but tax collectors were not honest. They deceived people and they wanted to draw in more money than was owed them so that they would be able to have more money themselves. Okay. So that's sinful. And as a matter of fact, the tax collectors were seen as those outcasts. But here Jesus is calling somebody who in the Jewish understanding of truth and right is not. He's just not in. So here we have Jesus passing by and calls him, and he immediately follows Jesus. That's really good to know. That when somebody hears Jesus call, if they've heard it and received it, they follow him. And we'll hear more about that as the summer moves on. That People heard him call, and they followed. So we're in the house at dinner, and there are other people gathered around who are sinners. 
and Jesus and his disciples are there. And the question comes out from, who are those people that ask the question? The righteous ones. The ones who think they are right with God, and they have all the answers, and they have done everything, let us say, by the law. And so they're judging the people Jesus is with. They're making a judgment. And Jesus has already made a judgment about these people, and he has said, they're welcome to be with me. And Jesus does that. He welcomes people who are on the outskirts of life. And then, there are many other things that are happening in this passage, where Jesus responds as soon as he can. That's wonderful about Jesus. He hears something, he does something, and it's always for the good. So what are these good things lined up? He's been teaching uh, his disciples and the tax collector about what the reign of God is like, where it brings everybody in and in together. And so he does go on his way to be with that little girl who is presumed dead. And we have a man of great faith who is coming here and saying, Jesus, I believe that you can raise her, that you can bring her wholeness. And so he responds to that. He's on his way. And on his way, you've heard this story before, haven't you? The woman who reaches out to touch just the hem of Jesus' garment because she believes fully that she will receive what she needs from Jesus just by that little bit of contact with Jesus. And he looks at her and he says, these are important words, your faith, your faith in me has made you well. Your faith in me has made you well. So we get to where the little girl is. There's a group of people who would naturally be there from their society, flute player, those mourners who came together gets rid of all of them. He goes in, and she's raised up. And that is a part of Jesus' desire to bring healing and health to everybody around him. That is a miracle. That is outstanding. And people around the area talk about that. Talk about Jesus and that he could raise this little girl from death. And there are other stories in the scripture similar to that. But what do we make of that? Jesus goes where people need him. Well, all people need him, but not everybody gains his attention. All of us here need Jesus, but we're not always able to be alert to his call to us. But the lesson for us today is pretty clear. Believe what Jesus says and act on it. When you sense that Jesus is calling you personally to do something for another person or a situation, act on it. You know, Jesus didn't take his time about any of these things. He didn't just kind of wander around and, well, it didn't take him a long time to get the little girl. It didn't take any time at all, it seems, for the healing of the woman with a hemorrhage. All of these are lining up for us to tell us the story of Jesus. And it is a story that is for you and for me to take in and to receive. I am always uh, concerned that sermons that I preach don't always touch our life enough. But I'll tell you something that happened here this morning uh, that was wonderful. We came here this morning, uh, several of us who are the leaders, and we heard from Claude, he's uh, very sick. I said, Claude, I hope you feel better. Well, I said, I'll pray for you, because uh, we need you this afternoon. He said, I'll do my best, I'll do my best. And I said, what are you going to take? Well, he told me some medicine, but I wouldn't have taken it, but that's what he thought he wanted to say. Okay. So, there's the medicine. Good for him, we hope. We'll find out. We come here to church, and uh, 
you say, well, I think I can play that first. Yeah, I can do it. And Stanley comes to the doors. We talk to him a little bit. Claude's not here. Well, I'd be happy to play. There he is. But he's also the assistant minister. He said, oh, my goodness. You've taken on everything except the sermon. And you can do that, too, I believe. But look at that. God in our midst is helping us. There's a need that is seen. Stanley says, I can help out. I would do that. And there was no hesitation. He said, what are those hymns? Oh, I can do those. Well, I don't know about last hymn so well, but I'll practice them a little bit. But we'll find out if he's good on that last hymn. But isn't he good on the first hymn? <laughs> yeah. That doesn't seem like much, maybe. To me, it is. Because we asked anyone of you, would you please take care of this? Anybody else out there who plays? Well, I know that. I know that Lane. If we hadn't had Stanley, maybe you would have been there. I don't know. But, you know, we have resources, and people come and help. And, and I know the ensemble, you know, I heard you playing. That's beautiful. We can do these things. But when a need comes along, and somebody responds, that's the way Jesus works in us. Do you hear the need sometime, and you just step up and say, yeah, I'll help you. You've done that. That's what this gospel, I think, is telling us in its deepest meaning. When there is a need, step up and help. Do the next best thing that you can do. Because as we can see in the example with the gospel today, that's what Jesus was doing. It's an example for us. And we have this wonderful, have this wonderful situation now because somebody stepped up and said, I can help, I will help. It's good that he's an accomplished musician, right? It's good that he has a doctorate in music. It's good that he has all kinds of willingness in him. But he didn't have to do that. But he said, I will. And I hope that as time moves along for you, you will have the same, I will. I will do that. I will offer myself. That's the essence of our living together in Christ, in the way that Jesus Christ is teaching us. Amen. Amen. As we stand together and we turn to the Apostles' Creed.
mercy on you and forgive you all of your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthens you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keeps you in eternal life. Amen. And now we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. And so let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Pray, O God, for the church. Unite us with any on the margins that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O God, for creation. Tend forests and fields and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans and send rains to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken in our leaders compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected, and inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need. Accompany anyone enduring chronic illness, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain, especially those on our prayer and concern list. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the eradication of racial hate. On this week, when we commemorate Emmanuel 9, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, with thanksgiving for these days of summer. We are concerned with the health risks of the thick smoke rising from wildfires. This can focus our attention on the difficulty with our natural environment. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, about the continued war in Ukraine. The devastations with deaths and the destruction are unspeakable. We raise our voices for peace, and now, in a time of quiet prayer, we pause for a personal Thanks, O oh God, for Barnabas and all the saints. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all.
us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. We receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us thank the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day promised that he would come again in his glorious resurrection. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. So shine in the eyes. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So shine in the eyes. We give you thanks, Father. Through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us, and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and us our lot, and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will, and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering, in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted, in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant. Therefore, taking bread and giving thanks to you, he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all, wondering, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church and gather into one all who share this bread and wine and fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And through him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us.
grace of God for the people of God.
May the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. I have eyes that see the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light to reveal it to the nations and the glory of the people of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son. Glory to the Holy Spirit. pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.